Hello everyone, and welcome to Youth Sunday at NBC. We are so excited that you have joined us just this morning. We are grateful that God has given us another chance to give Him the glory. Join in for us as we start singing. Get all excited and go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Thank you. 
our scripture for today comes from Psalms 139 verses 1 through 4, 13 to 14, and uh, 23 to 24. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my fitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. Verse 13. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Verse 23, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, and know my anxieties, and see if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Repeat after me, greater is he, greater is he, that is in me, that is in me, then he, then he, that is in the world, that is in the world, I can do all things, I can do all things, through Christ, through Christ, who strengthens me, who strengthens me. Buenos dias. La escritura de hoy viene de Salmo 139, versículos 1 a 4, 13 a 14, y 23 a 24 versículo 1 Señor, tú me examinas tú me conoces sabes cuando me siento y cuando me levanto aún a la distancia me lees el pensamiento mis trajines y descansos los conoces todos mis caminos te son familiares no me llega aún la palabra a la lengua cuando tú, Señor, ya la sabes toda Versículo 13 Tú creaste mis entrañas, me formaste en el vientre de mi madre Te alabo porque soy una creación admirable Tus obras son maravillosas y esto lo sé muy bien 23 Examíname, oh Dios, y sondea mi corazón Ponme a prueba y sondea mis pensamientos Fíjate si, si voy por mal camino y guíame por el camino eterno. Repitan después de mí. Porque Él, porque él que, está que está en ustedes, es más poderoso, es más poderoso, es más poderoso que el que está en el mundo. Que el que está en el mundo. Todo lo puedo, todo lo puedo en, Cristo, en Cristo que me fortalece. Que me fortalece. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for food, shelter, water. Thank you for waking us up this morning and letting us be here right now, Lord. Lord, thank you for letting us to come to the church to worship you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for everything you've done for our lives, Lord. Lord, thank you for giving us second chance after chance, Lord. We just thank you for everything that you've done in our lives to help us succeed, Lord. We just thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Todos cien sus ojos y oren a Dios. Gracias Dios por el agua, todo la, el aire y, y la comida que nos has dado. Y gracias porque nos ha visto nuestros ojos y que nos no hubiéramos estado aquí sin ti. Gracias porque nos diste una, un chance más para hacer lo correcto. Amén y amén.
the choir chimes and ocarinas make beautiful music together. We will play the song called In My Father's House. At this time, the xylophone ensemble will play a cannon. Cannons are like the children's game, follow the leader, where the leader makes a move and the follower imitates what the leader does. See if you can hear the cannon melody in the selection called Cannon Number 44. Thank you. 
composer of this song, The Goodness, was written by Toby Mac after the death of his firstborn son. Toby Mac realized that regardless of what you go through in life, God is still good. He thought about how gracious God was to him, and he wrote on a napkin one day, you're still the goodness in my life. Now, we will sing the, the goodness. goodness. Me. She I complain, but we you call me and on me to stay. And when you catch me just showing, it's my roots that you're growing, cause I was more in the moment. You are the light, so when the darkness falls from the greatest heights, they never seem so tall or not all your right. It's my roots that you're growing, don't wanna miss what you're showing. Ain't no doubt about you, everywhere that I go, you can show it up, Lord, you. Thank you all. Stand, please. Uh -uh. Do you know a 
what Jesus did for me? No, what did he do? He died on the cross so I wouldn't be lost. He really did that for you? Yes, and he did it for you too. He did it for you, and he did it for all of you. Let's listen as Jonathan leads the choir and singing, Jesus did it just for me. The God we serve does miracles! The God we serve. Why don't we thank God? Why don't we stand on our feet and thank God for these youth and young people? Woo! Good 
God Almighty. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Thank God for these young people. Hallelujah. Make us feel like we can run on just a little while longer. God has blessed us. He has blessed us to have young people in the midst. Amen. Let me tell you, if you hang around young people, you'll begin to feel young. You begin to look young. You begin to act young. I'm thinking about putting on a cap and say, I'm going to put on me a hat and say, You are good. You are good. Hallelujah. Thank you, young people, for blessing us today. Everybody all over this room is in great appreciation of what you're letting God use you to do. Amen. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. While you're still on your feet, look, let me ask you to turn your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. I'm telling we serve the amazing God. Hallelujah. Johnson, bring your mama back in and tell us it's time to stop crying. It's time to go to church now. Jonathan, bring your mama on back in here. Tell her stop that crying and come on back in. It's time, it's time for church now. Amen. I'm telling you, she got something to cry about. Amen. If you knew like I knew. If you knew like Sister Davis knew. If you knew like New Beginning knew. She has something to cry about. Come on back in, Sister Poss. We, you can cry on the inside. Hallelujah to the Lord. Lord has blessed us. These young people have done a marvelous job in presenting here today. We thank God for each and every one of them. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. Hallelujah. We're going to be proud of them for a long, long time. Because what they sing about, they are going to be about. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus the Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. When you found it, you will discover these words. Therefore, let him thinks, who thinks he stands take heed lest he falls. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also give the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. I want to talk about the great escape. The great escape. You may, you may be seated. The great escape. In 1942, a movie came out called The Great Escape. That movie was redone several times, and in 1963, Steve McQueen was the role, the main actor. The Great Escape depicted a group of people, Americans locked in to a German camp, a German prison camp. These Americans were fighting against the Germans during World War II and they were captured by the Germans. They were placed away in a, a facility for keeping, and therefore they became prisoners of war. These, known as POW, were prisoners of war. But these guys had a plan. Their plan was to dig tunnels under the ground, and then they would have a designated place by which they would come up out of the ground and they would make what is known as the Great Escape. They were to leave the prison by tunnels under the ground and they declared that we could do better and we can do more for the army of the Americans if we would just escape and then find ourselves on the front line fighting against the Germans. 
they had a plan. And since they had a plan, they went out to execute their plan. These prisoners of war had come to this conclusion that if we're going to have a plan, we're going to have to participate in this plan. If we're going to have a plan, we're going to have to persevere in this plan. If we're going to have a plan, we're going to have to be patient and wait for the right moment. And then they discovered that the plan would work, so the leader declared to them, I promise you that the plan will work. I hate to say it today, but 76 men escaped. They were scattered throughout the continent of Europe, but only three of them made it to freedom. Such it is in the life we live. God has devised a plan. And the plan is for us to escape what the devil has already laid out. The plan is for us to move past temptation and, and make sure that God is able to keep us in the midst of it. Let me tell you, when you escape sin, it is known as the great escape. Paul says it like this in Romans chapter 7. He says that every time I would to do good, evil is present with me. And since evil is present with me, I need a way of escape. Paul says, I want to do what's right. Paul says that I'm going to do what's right. Paul says that I am putting my focus on doing what's right. Paul declares even the saved soul, even one who is born again, has a tendency to do what is wrong. I want to serve you notice that there is somebody in, in this room, somebody next to you, somebody behind you, somebody, somebody in front of you who needs to know that God has a way of escape for you. You don't have to do it. You can hold your hope. You don't have to go to a dark place. You don't have to be where you are. God has a great escape for you. And I just came by today to announce to you that God has a plan. My first point to you today is God has a plan. When you look at the text, we look at the text, the, the Israelites, and, and they were looking at what their foreparents had done. And they were looking at the mistakes that their foreparents had made. Let me tell you, uh, seniors, we must get to a point where we can admit to our faults. We, can have to, we have to tell young people, don't go that way. There's a tragedy down the road. Don't act that way. I made that mistake. Young boy said to me, he said that you made your mistakes. Why don't you let me make mine? I said, brother, it's a tragedy. If you have a living testimony walking before you that I have messed up, I have fallen short, I made some drastic mistake that changed the course of my whole life, and I'm trying to lay it out to you so you won't make the same mistakes I made. I want to say to young people today, you don't have to continue to make mistakes that your foreparents made. You don't have to make mistakes that your buddies have made. You don't have to make mistakes that, that your friends and your neighbors have made. You don't have to make mistakes that your parents have made. You can be delivered even today in this what is known as the great escape. God has a plan. When you look at the plan, when you look at the plan, God says, and when you look at the first few pericopes, the text declares to us that Jesus is our rock. Even in the Old Testament, Jesus was our rock. Even in the Old Testament, Jesus was present, and Jesus was right there. He says that Jesus was our spiritual rock. He says that God was not pleased with our foreparents. And whatever God was not pleased in in your foreparents, he's not going to be pleased in it with you. Therefore, you have to make sure that you don't make the same mistakes. There's a spirit that looms and lurks in every family. There's a spirit that, that goes forth, back and forth in every family. And it can be passed from one generation to the other. And, and you don't have to be locked up in the midst of that generational curse. God says today that there's a way of escape and he wants you to take that way of escape. God has said to us that it, the one who is in you is greater than the one who's outside of you. Let me tell you, the devil has come to steal, to kill, and destroy. But you don't have to lay in it. You don't have to wallow in it. You don't have to live in it. You can escape right now here right now 
The devil has a way of locking us up, pushing us in prison, and making sure that we are prisoners of war. We are POWs. I, let me tell you, sometime we get to a point in our lives where we understand that the devil is out to get our children. But we have to lift our hearts for them, lift our voices for them, pray unto God for them, and tell the devil, you can't have mine. You, you need to understand that I walk and live by the blood of Jesus. And Jesus Christ himself is the one who is the one who will rescue us. He is the great emancipator. He will free us from all that we've caught up in. Don't get upset that you caught in some stuff. No, don't, don't be too bothered by the things you caught up in. Don't, don't, don't act like God has forgotten you. Don't act like God doesn't have a plan for you. Don't act like God is not fixing life for you. See, God is at work behind the scene. He's doing some things that we've never seen him done do before. God is doing some things with your child and with my child and, and with other folks' child. That's why you better treat everybody's child just like it's your child. Because you're going to get to a point in your life where your children won't hear from you. They won't obey you. And you need somebody else to, that will stand up and speak for them and anoint them and walk with them and advise them. Because children get to a point where they're climbing up Fool's Hill. And as they climb up Fool's Hill, they need somebody to come to them that they can trust. So you ought to invest. You ought to invest in everybody's child. You you ought, to, you, ought to, you ought to make sure that you, you do things for everybody's child. You, you ought to make sure you advise everybody's child. Pour into somebody else's child because the day is coming where you're going to be old fogey to your child. And when they come to the conclusion that you're old fogey, good sense won't make good sense. And they're going to let you know you're old fogey. You didn't even have, you didn't even have internet when, when you were my age. And how are you going to tell me how to do it? Let me tell you, the devil is up to the same old tricks. He's out to kill, steal, and destroy. The devil is up to the same old tricks. He tempts us by lust of the flesh, lust of life, and the pride of life. He tempts us by lust of the flesh. He tempts us over and over again based on what we see in lust of the eye. The devil got the same old tricks. Big Daddy would say, it ain't even warmed over. Same old soup. Hadn't even been warmed over again. Same, same old soup. Same old stuff. It's sin. It's sin. And when we get caught, and sooner or later, regardless of how holy you are, Sooner or later, regardless of how spiritual you are, sooner or later, you can be the potentate, you can be the priest, you can be the pastor, you, you can be somebody that, that has always lived your life right. And if you don't do it, somebody will lie on you. Folk, folk will make sure that when you leave here, that, that your legacy has a taunt on it. Your legacy has a scar on it. Folk will make sure even your friends come to you talking about uh, everybody ain't able. Let me tell you, when they say everybody ain't able, they are not complimenting you. They are not supporting you. They are telling you that they don't like what you have accomplished. They are telling you that they don't like how you carry yourself. They, kept, they are telling you you ought to be jealous and they are jealous of you. Folk don't neighbors. Neighbors, see, they, neighbors are always on the outside looking in. Co-workers are on the outside looking in, and they see you doing things. They, they see things going wrong with you. Somebody looked at that, that, that royal blue car out there this morning and said, Pastor Davis, and got rid of Sister Davis' car. And I'm telling you, people will lie on you. They'll make up stuff on you. So, uh, when Sister Joanne Dealworth got the car, she said, uh, that's where Pastor Davis used the park. What that royal blue car doing there? They supposed to have a black car. I, I know, I know people, Sister, Sister Richard, people will always make up stuff. So let me serve notice to you, Sister Joanne Dealworth and the rest of them. It's a loaner car. The car is in the shop. Woo-wee. Now text that. Now Facebook that. <laughs> we'll bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Only in church can we have such fun. God has a plan. And God has a plan for your life. The, the youth read today Psalm 139. God has beautifully and wonderfully created you. He has made you different from anybody else. There's nobody else like you. Regardless if you are a twin. Regardless if you are a triplet. There's nobody else like you. You are special to God. 
God has fashioned you. God has made you just who you are. God has taken time to make you who you are. And you need to be concerned about what God is doing with you behind the scene. It says, it says that they were caught in, in worshiping idols. They were mixed up in sexual immorality. They had turned their way away from God. And then verse number 10 said they were complainers. And every time they caught up themselves in sin, there was a, there was a whipping for it. It says they complained. It says that they were caught in idol worshiping. It says they had turned themselves away from the God that, that God has led them to be and led them to trust in. And it says that they, they were tempted and were destroyed by the serpents. When they sinned, they were destroyed by the serpents. When they complained, they were destroyed by the destroyer. It says, look at them for an example, but you don't have to be like them. I used to watch this, walk, the streets, watch the, watch, walk the streets of Mississippi, and I would see men sitting down under the tree with a bucket of wood, a barrel of wood, a tub of wood, and they would just be sitting there swapping lies and sharing the bottle. And I had to make a decision. At a young age, am I going to grow up this way? Am I going to be one who sit on the curve under the, the oak tree, swapping lies, sharing a bottle, and puffing on a joint? I had to make that decision that day. I had to make a decision. Am I going to do something with my life other than what I see before me? Am I going to stay in the same old rut that my four parents were in and my friends were caught up in? Am I going to stay where I am? I decided no, no, no. Matter of fact, I decided that the devil is a liar and the truth is not in him. I decided that the devil is a lying wonder and I wasn't going to participate. We have to get to a point in our lives, young people, where we make our own decisions for our own selves. It's one thing about me. Whatever messed up stuff I got in, whatever situation I got in, Brother Roscoe, I got in it on my own. I didn't take anybody with me. I, I didn't need anybody to coerce me to do it. I didn't need, need anybody to tell me to do it. I just flat messed up. So when I went before Dad, I said, Dad, I did it again. And he said, lay down again. You see, some of y'all laid on the bed. I laid on the floor. Daddy's, daddy's situation was, look, I don't want you to give at all. That concrete ain't going to give. He said, when you suck it in, you can just keep sucking because it ain't going any further. Daddy said, lay down. Let me have it. Matter of fact, he said, all 130 pounds of it belong to me today, baby. Amen. And we couldn't call 911. We couldn't, we couldn't call, call 911. Here, here's the phone. Because even the police officers were on dad and mama's side. We have to get to a point where we understand God has a plan for our lives. Regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what your background look, out, look like, regardless of what color you are, regardless of what race you are, regardless of how much money you have or don't have, God has a plan for your life. You have to make sure that you understand the plan. The text, the text of class said, said, therefore, if you think you are more than what you think you are, it says, it says therefore, let him who thinks he stands Take heed lest he falls. He says, if you think. Now, these are Christian folks. These are brand new Christians. And these Corinthians thought since they are saved, they really got it going on. These Corinthians are just like NBCians. They had come to the conclusion that I'm saved, sanctified, and woo, filled with his precious Holy Ghost. And let me just tell you, just because you saved, sanctified, and filled with his precious Holy Ghost, you need to understand that the devil is real, and he's going to try you on every hand. The devil is after us. The devil is looking forward to, to sifting you, as Jesus says. Peter, the devil has asked for you, because the devil wants to sift you like sifting wheat. What the devil does, he builds them up. 
He, he builds us up. He builds us up. He make we make us think we got it going on. He makes you think that we balling and shot calling. The devil builds us up. He builds us up high. And then when we get to com- accomplish a few things, he gives us a little bit more things. Then he, we accomplish something else. He gives us a little more thing until we are up here. What we think is on the top of the world. And guess what? When we're on the top of the world, the text declares, don't think that you're on there to stay up there. The same folk you messed over on your way to the top is the same folk going to see you fall down. I, I, told, I told the church in 2016 that sooner or later, what you see the orange man doing in 2016, it, it won't be long before he, his whole world comes tumbling down. I told the church in, in 2016 to let him go on do what he want to do. <laughs> go, on, go on, do whatever you want to do. Act any way you want to act. Mess with women and disgrade them more than a rapper and, and make sure that you, you disgrade uh, somebody that's of a different race than you are because sooner or later, the same folk that you disgrace are the same folk that's going to be the world, watching the worldwide news when you come down. I'm not a prophet. I just know God. <laughs> I, I, I didn't predict it, but God always does. God has a plan. God has a plan. And now the same one that misused folk in 2021 has over 100 charges against him, and he has no way out. I am just waiting to see what our government is really made of to see if there will be some prison time or there will be some probation time. Are you with me? God has a plan. You don't even have to fight your battles. God knows how to fight your battles. And when God fights your battle, the enemy returns not. When God fights your battle, the enemy has to retreat. When God fights your battle, the enemy cannot touch you. Psalm 91, Psalm 91, you ought, to, you ought to spend some time with it sometime. Psalm 91 said, these evil will not come near your dwelling place. Psalm 91 to say, and we ought to have our children just hear it and read it every morning and every night before. Because the devil, if he can't keep you while you, if he can't get you while you're wide awake, he'll get you in the midst of your sleep. He's always at work. He, he's always trying to pull a puppet out to make sure that you don't accomplish your goal. The devil is trying to cut our children short of what God has already given our children. And God has given us something that we've never had before. It's just a matter of time. My next point, my next point is you, there must be participation. There's a plan. God has to plan. There must be participation. In in, in verse number 12, we have to participate. Don't act like you all that. You got to participate. You have to understand that you're nothing but dressed up dust. You're not even good dirt. You're just dressed up dust. And, And God is the one who controls the dust. And God is the one that tells that dust to get up in the morning. God is the one that tells that dust to sit down in the daytime. God is the one that tells that dust to lay down. And when God speaks, the dust can rise. And when God speaks, the dust will lay down and never get up again. You just just dressed up dust, baby. You just dressed up dust. I mean, we're clean. We got suits with other folk name in it. You know you're clean then. Expensive stuff. I mean, expensive. Uh, let me tell you, young people, create something on your own. You are smarter than those who you're giving your money to. You are smarter than those who made the, the red bottom shoes. You, you are smarter than those who made the red rim hat. Well, you know, women used to get excited about V and L and L and V. They used to get excited about red bottom shoes. And now the men got red bottom hats. They put on. Let me just share with you. You can create something of your own and let other folk buy from you and make other folk give to you and make other folk make you rich. You know how you you really know. Do you really know how bad it makes me feel when I stick my hand on a hand sanitizer? And it makes me feel bad every time I think of it. I, I mean, I got all of these degrees. 
degrees in technology. And I didn't think about taking some alcohol that's not even 100% alcohol. I got all these degrees in electronics and technology. You know, our brother Turner, I should have been the one that created hand sanitizer. It's not really alcohol. It's just 70%, 60%, and some of it's 55%. And then the employer takes and put water in it and water it down anymore. So it is maybe 25%. You know, I, would, I should have thought about that. Now, every restaurant has one on every entrance, every, every section of the wall, every restroom, every, every hotel. You know, I should have done that. This church would have long been blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Young people, you have what it takes. You just have to participate. You have everything it takes. You have the brain. You have the heart. You have the physique. You have everything it takes to make this world a better place. You need to participate. You got to participate. When you participate, you need to understand that I want to sit by myself and watch what God reveals to me. When you sit alone and shut out some of the loud music and, and shut out some of the games and videos, shut out some of the parting and the hanging out. When you shut it out, God can speak to you. You know, I should have sat down and let God say, create some alcohol that will turn into hand sanitizer. It's already alcohol. Just make the liquid a gel and then folk will sell it and buy it. And you can sit down and look at the beauty of Sister Davis the rest of your life. While other folk, while other folk just make you rich. Walmart finally got some baskets that didn't, have, didn't need front end alignments and rear end alignments. They finally got some baskets. I've gone to three locations and they got brand new baskets now. And there's no string rolled up in the, in the wheels right now. They got some brand new basket. Now, Walmart heard me on the broadcast, and they took advantage of my vision that they will get some brand new baskets. And now all over the world, Walmart's getting brand new baskets. All you have to do is think. All you have to do is get motivated. Participate in the plan that God has placed before you. Machines are made to make life easy. The reason why we have rollers on these xylophones is because children don't have to pick them up. They can just roll them. The reason why, reason why we have drumsticks is because we don't have to beat drums, all the drums, with our hands. The reason, reason why we have keys on the keyboard is because we discovered, somebody discovered that it will make a noise. And the reason why we got trash cans and Home Depot buckets, because we discovered that anywhere you hit that bucket, it makes a different sound and it is a musical sound. Somebody came up with the idea. While we just shucking and jiving, just living life, just good to be here. Don't let life pass you by participate in it. If you've been waiting to get your education, the time is now. Because the HISD superintendent is telling you, every day we're going to shut y'all down. The HISD superintendent is telling us every day, he's telling us every day, this is my world. I'm going to play with it my, like my own little toy. And he doesn't care what you do. Now here it is, people who who, want, who don't want their children in public school, they usually pay money for their children to go to private school. But we have a governor and we have a superintendent that has come to the conclusion, I tell you what we gonna do, we gonna pay people to put their children in public school and the other folk and take them out of public school and put them in private school and they can keep all the money. So the rich gets richer and the poor gets poorer. But let me tell you, God is not sleep. Sooner or later, somebody's going to get a notion to roll that wheelchair right into the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't suppose to say that. Um, I'm the preacher, right? That's that temptation coming in again. And God's going to give me a way of escape. He's he going to tell me, don't ever say that again. But you have to understand that God is in control God has a plan. God is not sleep. You don't have to worry about them running us like cattle. 
God is still on the throne. We just need to participate in God's plan. There must be participation. Get your degree because nobody can take it from you. Get your attitude straight because God can bless you through it. Don't hate on your haters and don't worry about the haters hating on you. You need to brush the haters off, get focused, and get real about where God is taking you. A man who have no control over his or her own spirit is like a city whose walls are torn down. Let me tell you, get control of yourself. Don't let every little thing excite you. Don't let pictures on, on Facebook and any social media make you want to be like anybody else. God has made you just like he made you for a reason of changing the whole world. You are special to God. God is still good. God is still walking with us. God is still blessing us, even at a young age. One of the most terrible things I can hear a news reporter and a judge say is, look at her. She's so pretty. So that suggests that if they wasn't pretty to you, then you would have a different judgment on them. Let me just tell every child in the room, you are still pretty. It doesn't matter what folks say about you. It doesn't matter. Don't, don't give up stuff because you're pretty. Just walk and talk. Act like you're pretty. Don't, act, don't let folk tell you that you're pretty and do any and everything to you. Don't let folk tell you that you're handsome and they love your bow legs and you, then you go and do something crazy. Make sure you stay focused and have control of your own mind, your own body. That's how you get what you want to get. Because if you get rich quick... You're going to get broke quick. If, if you get in a get rich quick scheme, then God is not going to be able to use you in that scheme. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 1 that God has the power to take his hand off you and turn you over to a reprobate mind. Don't let folk influence you to do anything wrong. Stay with the Lord. Walk with him. Be obedient. Have a good attitude. Wake up on a bad day having a good day because God is in control. I'm telling you, God is in control. And when God is in control, whatever situation you're in, God is able to change it. My first point is that God has a plan. My second point is we must participate in God's plan. My third point to you today is there must be some perseverance. There must be some precedent. No temptation has overtaken you except such that is common to man. King James would say common to all men. What you're going through, you must persevere through it. What you're going through, you're not the only person going through it. What you're going through, many other people have gone through far more than what you're going through. And they have persevered. Persevered means to stick into it. Stay with it. Hang in there. You know how many times that, that Michael Jordan was passed over? And now we're calling him the greatest player of all time. Do you know that Simone Biles had to take medication in order to calm herself down? And now she's the greatest of all time. Do you know that Michael Phelps' teacher told him that he would never learn anything and that he wasn't fit to learn anything? Now he's the greatest swimmer of all time. We have to get to a point where we hear from God and not from other people. We have to stick with those who encourage us and not those who discourage us. You know, I, I could have, been, in, I could have been, been really discouraged when I went to Mississippi Delta. I went to, for orientation, and when I got there, I started looking around the room. I was like, man, hmm. And then I looked in the next room. I was like, wow, man. Too dumb to know I was at an all-white college. I'm looking around the room for us. I'm looking around the room to see who looks like me. I go back home after orientation and say, I said, Mama, I'm the only one in the room that looks like me. And these words, my dear, have carried me the rest of my life. She said to me, don't worry about who's in the room. You're better than anybody in the room. And you can think better than anybody in the room. And you can make it better than anybody in the room. It has carried me for life. Now I think I'm something. 
I mean, she put some gas in my tank. She put some juice in my heart. She said that you are better. And because mama said I was better, I have proven that I am better. Not to mention when God comes along, he makes us better. Young people, don't give in. Persevere. Don't, don't give in. Don't give out and don't give up. Persevere. Regardless if you have a tired tongue, persevere. I used to stutter. And even today, I can't sit and say certain words, so I begin to substitute words for words. When it's time for me to say scripture, I say verses. Because I have to find a way to communicate so that I can get the words out. Let me tell you, you are different than anybody else. And just because you don't have what you see other folk have and you don't do what you see other folk do, God has beautifully and wonderfully created you. You have to persevere. Press on to see what the end's going to bring. Press on, press on, press on, press on to see what the end's going to bring. Next week, next week, Pastor Clifford Wilson from Indianola, Mississippi is coming for our Family and Friends Day. He was my seventh grade teacher. And now he's a pastor that, that has a great reputation in the neighborhood. So he's coming to preach with us next week. And I said to you, you ought not go leave here and go to heaven before you hear this preacher preach. My seventh grade teacher, I've been having mama look for my seventh grade card so when he gets here, I can see what kind of grade I made in his classroom. Now, if it was good, I'm going to let him know. If it was bad, I don't think I'm going to be able to find that card. What it says to you young people is, Pastor David's grades have not always been that good. And Pastor Davis, Davis did not graduate in the honors. I was a part of the National Honor Society, but when, but when it comes to Gentry High School, out of 200 people, I graduated 43. That is horrible. Somebody said, woo. That is horrible in my sight. My grade point average, Sister Roxy, was, was a, was a 2.3. If I was in college, I would have been on probation. But God has a way of blessing us, and he won't even look at the past. He looks forward to the future. Somebody said, maybe I need to change my membership. I got a pastor up here preaching to me with a 2.3 average. But let me tell you, after Gentry High School, that, that 2.3 average never existed ever again. When I went to college, it turned into a 3.2. After, after I went to my master, it turned to a 3.45. After I went to my doctor, it turned to a 3.95. Let me tell you, it's not how you get started, it's how you end. You have to persevere. I had a teacher tell me, and for my master, he said, I know you have this prestigious grade point average that you're trying to maintain. I said, yeah. I thought the man was complimenting me. <laughs> Brother Carter, I thought he was going to help me maintain my 3.45 average. The church knew I was graduating Sunday. This was Friday. I get an email from this professor. And the email says this, fail. Yeah, that's the right word. Fail TH510. So he said to me that he, had, he told me at the beginning of class, when he passed out the first paper at the beginning of the semester, he says, I know you have a prestigious uh, grade point average you're trying to maintain. I thought it was going to help me hang in there. I thought my 3.45 was going to go to a 3.7. But then he sends me this email while I'm sitting at the computer uh, typing out my last statement. Now, this is on Friday, and I graduate on Sunday. And it's about 4 o'clock almost, no, it's about 12 o'clock in the noonday, and he sends me a message fail. And he says that you didn't turn your paper, your final exam in on time. I started speaking in tongues. And I drove over there to approach his little short self. And I wanted to know from him what you talking about. And when I got there, he was still on campus. But check this out. He locked his door. He must have thought he had a mad black man on his hand. I went to the dean that was over him. And, but I presented myself under control. The dean said, slide it under the door. 
He said, I've already heard about it, and I told him that he couldn't do that. My paper wasn't due till 4 p.m. He said, yeah, but when I sent him the email back, I put 12 noon, and he sends me a failure at 1219. I'm busy doing the work and sending it in, and then he has failed me. So we had to have a come to Jesus meeting. But when I got there, he was long gone. He locked his door and left the campus. Now I want his home address and his home phone number. But the dean said, slide it on the door. And the dean made him grade my paper. And when he graded my paper, he decided to take one last stab. And he gave me a 30 on a final exam. But God is not asleep. My grades were so high until when he gave me a 30, I still came out with a 72. But watch what God does. Your enemies that will try to attack you, you need to just persevere because the enemies that will try to attack you, God will bless. God will bless them. Daniel, come to the drums, please. God will, will bless. God will bless you. God will bless you in the midst of your enemies trying to tear you down. So graduation day came. Two days later. And he was assigned to be the one that walk us in, in front of everybody else. He was assigned. Dr. Amonette was assigned to walk us in. He was assigned to walk us in. So guess what? My name is Davis. I'm the first one in line. And he had to look me square in my face. And he had to walk in and turn around and watch all of us walk in. And I looked him dead in his face. I had my tassel. I, I had my honor card. I had my robe. I'm looking him straight in his face. And I didn't flinch because I watched what God was doing. And then I got awarded the humanitarian award for going to another church and then taking the whole school over there to do some great things. And guess what? He had to be the one to give me the award. I'm watching God do his thing. And then the dean, the same dean that told me to slide my paper under his door. Young people, I'm telling you that God will put some people in the way that will bless you if you just persevere. The same dean that told me to slide my paper under his door. That same dean said to me, you go around in this room and you shake every professor's hand in this room. And I went to the room and I shook every professor in the whole room. And the last one was Dr. Amonette. I shook Adam that and he had to look, you know, young men, that's why you got to make eye contact when you shake hands. And that time I had an extra grip and I had an extra eye contact and I stared him right in his eye and he saw what God was doing. Now, this is a Christian school and he shook my hand. So when we when the graduation was over, and I picked up my rewards. I'm sitting over there with the folk that man knew cool all day. <laughs> I'm sitting over there with them, and after it was over, everybody was dealing, uh, hanging around, taking pictures in the courtyard. I went and found Dr. Amonette. I said, now, baby, get your camera out, because he may run. I went and found Dr. Amonette. I, I went and found him, Brother Hopper. I said, Brother Ammon, Dr. Amonette, I want to take a picture with you. And what I had in my mind, I want to show this picture to our youth and young people. And tell him how God will use a guy that will be used by the devil. God will still use him to bless you. I got a picture with Dr. Amonet. And he's shaking my hand and giving me that fake smile. But I was cheesing all day long. I, I was so glad. I was so glad that Dr. Amonet showed up that day. And God will show people in the midst of what you're going through. God will bless you and show out in front of them. The psalmist says that God will, will make a table. He, God will set a banquet. God will do some things in the presence of your enemies and make your enemies say, ooh, we look at God. There's no temptation. So, so you got, God has a plan. You got to participate. You have to persevere. The four things, you got to be patient. Got to be patient. Let God, let, God, let God move. Let God do it. Don't go, if I had a gone in that school like a Bronco bull, they would have kicked me out and called the police and said, we got a, a guy that's suspicious. We don't know who he is on campus. But when you have a dispute, 
Number one, you dress up and brush your teeth. Goggle your mouthwash. So if they want to get close to you, they can smell fresh breath. Get well dressed. Don't act like a thug. Walk in like you're a brother. Hold your head up. Look at them dead in their eye and watch what God does. You have to be patient with some of this stuff because if you're patient with it, God is at work behind the scene. The Bible says there is no temptation overtaking you except such that is prevalent, that is common to other folk. You're not the only one going through who you, what you're going through. I'm not the only one that Dr. Amonette tried to, tried to flunk the last day. But the next semester, the next semester, Brother Miles, I'm talking about God doesn't take long. God doesn't take long. The next semester, the president walks in Amonette's office, whispers in his ear, tell him to go down to his office. The president fires him on the spot for something that he had done wrong, and the president had to teach the class himself. Let me tell you, God has a way of blessing you. You just got to be patient. I went back the next semester and I heard it on campus just to finish up some fine details because I wanted a preaching degree, right? I wanted a preaching class and I just wanted to be there to hear. I'm not there to watch God move. I'm just there. I don't know that God is still moving. And the president walks in and dismisses Dr. Amonette right there on the spot. The president carried on the class. Now Dr. Amonette is gone. He never has the opportunity to abuse another student. He never has the opportunity to brag on how many students he has flunked. He had a ledger of how many students he had flunked. He had flunked one girl twice in two semesters. And he bragged about it. The Bible says there is no temptation that you're having that is not common to every other man. And then it says, but God is faithful. Be patient. God is faithful. And God is faithful. The God who has allowed you, he is faithful. The God who will allow you, he will not allow you to be tempted. He will allow you to be blessed, but he will not allow you to be tempted beyond that which he, you are able to stand. The stuff you're going through, God knows you can handle it. God knows I couldn't handle it, so God allow you to go through it. God knew I couldn't have been living in this generation, and God knew I couldn't have lived in the other generation. But God is faithful. He knows where you are, and he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to bear. But with the temptation, he will give you the great escape. That's the promise. So God has a plan. You have to participate. You have to persevere. You have to be patient because God has a promise. Look at the promise. The promise is that God will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to handle. Whatever temptation it is, God has a way of being right there beside you. The problem is sometimes God is right there in the midst and we, we tell God we can handle this. A matter of fact, I have come to the conclusion one time when God told me that, that he can handle it for me and he will handle it. I said, oh, no, God, I really, I don't want you to handle this. Let me handle this one. But God will not tempt you beyond what you can bear. But with the temptation, he will make a way of escape for you. You need to be looking for the escape. If a fire broke out in this room, people are going to start looking for doors. If we were on the second floor, people would look for stairs. If we were out in the, in the forest and the, and the fire was surrounding us, we would look for a way out. Let me tell you, God gives us a way out. We don't have to do what we do the way we do it. God has given us a great escape. He promised that he will give us a great escape, that we may be able to bear it. Such it is with sin. God has always given us a way, and we can escape it. God has a way to, to present to you, and he wants to present it to you. He has promised that he will present it to you. You have to look forward to the escape. God has given us an escape. Even from our sinful ways, God has given us an escape. He did it over 2,000 years ago on a hill called Calvary. With Jesus the Christ, he, in the fullness of time, he brought Jesus on the scene. 
in the fullness of time, he brought Jesus so that we wouldn't have to live under the rule of the law. Because the law was a, a taskmaster that told us where we were wrong and dared us to do what is right. Over 2,000 years ago, on a skull hill called Calvary, Jesus the Christ became our way of escape. If you're in sin and can't get out of sin, Jesus is our way of escape. Over 2,000 years ago, on a skull hill called Calvary, they hung him between two thieves. Jesus the Christ, he died, I tell you, on an old rugged cross. Jesus died for you and he died for me. He's our way of escape. That same Jesus who died on Calvary, they laid him in a grave. But early that third day morning, he gave us a way of escape. He got up with all power, all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He rose with all power. That same Jesus that got up with all power is sitting on the right hand of the Father. And when we sin, he gives us a way of escape. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father making intercessions for us. He gives us a way of escape. He's giving us the great escape. But one of these old days, I don't know when and I don't know where, but one of these old days, in the morning or in the evening one of these old days at the trump of God the dead in Christ shall rise and those of us who remain will be caught up with him in midair and we will forever be with the Lord hallelujah to the lamb we gonna sing over there holy 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 blessed is the lamb blessed is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world hallelujah we praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. We honor you, Lord. Thank you, God, for who you are, for what you do. Hallelujah. It is a great escape, I tell you. One of these old days, when there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, folk will be going their way to hell. But one of these old days, in the morning, I'm going over yonder, around the throne of God, I'm going to join the four beastly creatures. I'm going to join the 24 elders crying, holy, holy, holy. Blessed is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. You think we have church down here. When we get over yonder, we're going to really show sure enough have some church. When we get over yonder, Jesus will light up the city. There will be streets paved with gold. There will be jasper wall. When we get over yonder, it is a place of no more. No more crying. No more dying. No more backbiting. No more suffering. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We thank God. If you want to go with me, I'm getting a, a flight out of here. And if you want to get on my flight, you're going to have to be with Jesus. You must be born again. You have to be born again. You have to know him for yourself. It is individually that we need to get to know Jesus. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to try Jesus. Jesus the Christ. He is the one who makes a way. Out of no way. He gives us the great escape. We're going to ex escape this polluted world. Life, life evermore. And I want to tell you, I'm on my way. The devil should have killed me while he had me. But it's too late now. I know Jesus in the departing of my sin. I hear the Holy Spirit and he walks with me. He talks with me and he tells me I'm his own. The Holy Spirit is my GPS. He's my global positioning system. And he directs me at the right place, at the right time, around the right people. God is trying to open the door for us. And when he opens the door, you need to step in the door. You need to be born again. You need to know him in the departing of your sin. If you're not saved, if you're not sure that you're going to heaven, if Jesus would come right now, you need to confess Christ as your Savior. Believing that he's the Son of God. Believing that he died for your sins. Believing that you, he rose from the dead. That's, that little simple story will make a difference. 
Will you trust him today? If you've not received him, bow your head with me and invite him into your heart. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. If you're here today and you struggle with sin like I do. Every time I would to do good, sin is present with me. And the devil is trying the same old tricks. He's just coloring it a different way. I want to pray for us that we will walk with Jesus. Father God, we come now submitting ourselves to you. We believe that you are the Son. We believe that you are the Holy Spirit. We believe that you are the Father. Now, Lord, we need you. We need you to operate in your plan. We need you, Father God, that we can participate in your plan. We need you in order for us to persevere in your plan. We need you, Lord, to keep us patient. We need you to bless us to trust you. And Lord, we thank you for your promise that you will be with us. Now bless us today, Father, that we will stay focused on you, that we will walk in you, that we will tell others about you, and that we will be blessed by you. Lord, whenever the devil tries to use us, we ask you to give us a way of escape. For you have promised it to us. Lord, bless our youth and our young people. We thank you for their gifts. We ask you to bless them to use their gifts to glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Let him in today. And turn your life totally around. If you won't you just let him in. Just let him in. He'll change. Let him in today. Let him in today. You turn your life around. All these things. If you just let him. Just let him in. All these things. If you. Every last one of them. Every last one of them can be. If you. Let him in. Hallelujah. Let him.